what do on-campus relationships, C.S. Lewis, soccer, and fall fashion have in common? They're all articles in the Echo. What is the Echo? The Echo is our campus newspaper, and it's useful for everything from education to entertainment. I am the co-editor of the Life and Times page of the Echo currently, and I have been for uh, a little under a year now. There's me and my co-editor, Lauren. Up above me is the picture of the Echo staff at Christmas last year, and behind me is the, a picture of what an article that I have written recently looks like. I've also worked on the uh, editorial staff of the newspaper in my high school, so I have a lot of journalistic experience, and I know why reading and engaging with a campus newspaper means so much. Many of you have never heard of the Echo, let alone picked it up every single Friday when it's produced, but I'm here to tell you why it is important to read the Echo and why you're going to want to. So now that I've told you about my experience, let me explain the problem with the lack of readers of the Echo. Sadly, the student body doesn't really read the Echo. In addition, many freshmen don't even know how to access it. In my class dis discussion, every single member of the discussion said that they had never read the Echo before. One person even said that they didn't even know what the Echo was. To me, this was really sad because I know how valuable it is to plug into this incredible thing that Taylor University has to offer. As well, it is important to establish habits of reading the newspaper now for later in your life. L.L. Hank said the college years are particularly important in the socialization to news media habits as graduation from college represents a dramatic and predictable change in the life cycle. Because the transition is anticipated and clearly marked, it is reasonable to assume that preparation for change occurs prior to graduation. Anticipating shifts in news consumption that correspond to life cycle changes might be expected to occur. So in other words, things are going to change, but our habits that we create now and engagement with news media will stay forever. And so if engaging with media, engaging with local and global things is important to you, you should engage with the local newspaper now. Students should connect with resources like the Echo, but you can also connect with other um, news sources and outlets, and the Echo is just one really easy and accessible way to access the news, create habits for later in life. Another problem with the lack of engagement in the Echo is because the, is the disrespect it causes the Echo staff, who works really, really hard to create the Echo every week. Editors work a minimum of about 15 hours a week to create this thing that is so um, intensive with a whole batch of new information every single week. And last year, the Echo created a documentary series to, to create more interest in the Echo. And I'm gonna show you a little clip of production night, which is just one little small portion of what it looks like to create the Echo every single week. Production night can be the most fun part of being on the Echo staff. Production night is on Thursday of every week for their paper, which is almost every week in the school year. They gather all of Nice's designs, edit, and send the paper off to the printers. You can feel the power of collaboration in the room as the editors work hand in hand with the designers to make sure that their story is being portrayed the way they want it to. Designing an Echo can be a very time consuming process and requires practice in order to make it fly by. Jackie, one of the Echo's designers, is in charge of designing the front page for this piece. While the piece is being designed, the editors of the Echo will fact check and make sure everything is in AP style in order to follow the best journalistic practices. Once the cover is designed and the piece is edited, it gets sent to Eric, the Echo's editor in chief. He has the final say in design and editing decisions and gives final approval for the newspaper. Oftentimes, this process can have multiple edits and changes causing the writers to have to go back to their computer to make edits. So like I said, that's just one example of what it takes to create the Echo every single week. And it is so much fun for the Echo staff, but it is a lot of work, and it's important to respect the work that they've put in. Aside from the Echo, there are statistics proven that the engagement of young people with pol like political problems and civic engagement has greatly depleted. Debo Kino said, some research on youth and politics shows increasing political apathy among the young, demonstrated by their declining interest in politics, reluctance to engage themselves in political and civic matters, and a low turnout for political elections. So we need to be attentive to the politics and the news of our day and age 
because someday it's going to be us at the top and we're going to be the ones controlling the world. And so it's important to invest in those things and be aware of them now. Uh, now that I've told you about the problem of students not reading the ECHO, I'm going to tell you about uh, why you should engage the ECHO and why you're going to want to. So the ECHO has something for everybody. The ECHO has six sections, news, life and times, arts and entertainment, opinions, sports, and features. Here we have one of the most recent issues of the ECHO. The front page is always gonna be your news page and that contains breaking news from the local or campus events. Here we have the sports page, which talks about um, summaries of different sports games and different profiles on some of the greatest athletes on campus. The feature page is done in more narrative style, meaning it tells a more historical, detailed description of certain people or events on campus. Life and Times is more creative. Uh, there's a lot of interactive elements as well as talking about different clubs on campus. Arts and Enter Entertainment talks about local and campus-wide art, um, theater, and music. And Opinions of Public Forum, where students and staff can all contribute different opinion articles and opinion columns for uh, discussion on the public forum. So as I said, if you look for something that you like, the Echo is bound to have something for you. And there's always going to be uh, a way you can engage or something that catches your attention. So campus papers like the Echo also provide an incredible source of community and education in college, in college students. Not only does the paper inform readers, it also gives experience to those who work for the Echo. So people that are on staff learn what it's like to be a journalist. The college newspaper should remain more normative in nature, helping the budding journalists learn the processes by which to disseminate information, facilitate social and political processes, and serve as a voice independent of vested investments as established institutions, DiBocchino said. So some might say they don't have time to read the Echo, but it really isn't that long. They also might say the Echo is irrelevant, but really this is some of your most untainted, unfiltered news you're gonna get in your lifetime. So again, I would encourage you to look at this great thing we have in Echo that doesn't have, is it sponsored or paid by another institution or organization or news source, is that it's its own thing and it's going to give you unbiased, unfiltered news. So speaking of strengthening our minds and our engagement, did you know that reading will make you more, will make your brain quicker and faster to learn? And if you don't read, your brain is going to become slower. According to A.E. Cunningham and K.E. Stanovich, lack of exposure and practice on the part of the less skilled reader delays the development of automaticity and speed at the word recognition level. In other words, if you don't read, your brain is going to get a lot slower. But if we do read, we will enhance our verbal intelligence. In other words, reading makes you smarter. And that's from the article by those same people. So a positive thing um, is that it's easy to access, it helps you engage with the community. If you don't read it, your, your brain is going to get slower because you're not going to be reading. If you do read it, your brain is going to get faster because you are reading it. So I, in all re reality, I would encourage you to be passionate about the ECHO, to invest in it, to look at it, and to be engaged with it. In conclusion, the amount of students reading the ECHO is extremely lacking. Reading the ECHO and finding something you enjoy can create good habits, allow you to connect and strengthen your brain. I encourage you to go to one of these kiosks. They're little black kiosks. They're all over campus, and you can find the echoes there. Or you can go online, theechonews.com, and find different articles that you might enjoy. And if you really have an opinion or you want to write, don't hesitate to contact me or email echo at taylor.edu with your column or your interest. And I'd love to hear from you, and please pick up an echo tomorrow on Friday. Thank you.